New Book is really about what ties all of our projects together, the ideas that cohere across different categories and families. There are continuities, and so we take the opportunity to point out what things they have in common and what ideas we're still working on. And it just gives a little bit more insight into uh, the practice and, and the things that we've spent our time making and doing um, in the cities where we work. We're in a time where it's very important and urgent, in fact, what we do next. How do we build? How do we design buildings that will connect us more strongly and make it more obvious that we are part of Earth? We're not giving up on Earth. So we're looking for ways that buildings can make stronger connections between us and our environment and create social spaces where people can connect to each other. A theme that always reoccurs in our work is pattern and rhythm because architecture is an unmoving, monumental kind of art. And I think tall buildings really lend themselves to this kind of study because you can do these moves in the building that affect the inside. They're a benefit to the person living there, but in these slight shifts, you can start to create a real dynamic that enlivens the skyline. And these patterns can contribute to how the building performs. One of them is City Hyde Park. You can see these balconies splayed along the south edge. It's really just acting like a sunshade that you can inhabit. It's almost like having a porch, even though you're living in the middle of the city. So they're letting people step outside to connect to their environment, say hi to their neighbors. There's a dynamic to it. It's very engaging. Even if you don't live there, you can experience this movement and see the sun patterns moving across this building. What's really interesting with the American Museum of Natural History is we, we're working with this idea of flow, but flow from the aspect of moving people in and through the building, but also this aspect of flow in terms of space and discovery. And we used a lot of analog methods for studying flow, even working with blocks of ice in the middle of the winter, melting them with a blowtorch or hot water to capture these qualities that happen from flow and embody them into the project. Almost like if you're going through a canyon or, or some kind of landscape in an effort to make people curious about science. Going toward terrestrial is learning lessons from how nature constructs things. There's lots of interesting things we can learn from nature, both from how animals build nests, but also just the physics of how things stand up and how they can work without huge impact in each environment, without using a lot of energy. This is this incredible ravine at UC Santa Cruz, and students come across this bridge through a forest of redwoods to get to Kresge College. What's interesting about the redwoods is they actually are families and they're connected below the ground. So we try to preserve the clusters intact and weave in between and in and out of them. So looking at all the things that live in this forest, we were able to come up with a design here that maintains the clusters and families of redwoods. In biology, the tree canopy we know is full of biodiversity. There's so many communities that live way up in the canopy. So it's this interesting unexplored area, but it also holds a special place in our imagination. And this idea of being up in the tree, tree house, or climbing up in the trees, is something that I've always tried to capture in projects like the Writer's Theater with this walkabout that people can go out on during intermission or go out and be really literally in the canopy of the oaks surrounding and in the University of Chicago Paris Center. And the placement of the main great room up at the top, perched above the height of the neighboring buildings, to give people a sense of this elevated height up there, you'll be surrounded by these roof gardens and views of Paris all around.
This is called a stage buoy. It was our design for a stage for the artist and performer Nick Cave. Basically, we thought about what is a stage and we wanted something that they could interact with. But what's really interesting is just in designing a movable object like this, which can all be moving at different times, like this, this is just too fun. Um, <laughs> to solve this, we have to work with other people besides just architects and experimenting with the material and asking the question, what are you made of? I think this aspect of our practice really goes beyond the digital experimentation and really works directly hands-on with materials to find out their qualities. One of the things we've been really thinking about is this age-old idea, almost a cliche, glass equals transparency equals a clear, free, open society. And today, everything is clad in glass. So it almost like lost the power of that aspect of transparency. We talk about transparency in a more nuanced way. So this project is going to be made of hybrid materials to provide protection from overheating, which also produces a low reflectivity to the building. And all of these are very important qualities to reduce glare, to reduce bird strikes, so the building can perform on the level of a city. We have to think for the environment, for the inhabitants, the careful selection of the exact qualities that you want in the glass so that it responds to its specific environment. Maybe the next step beyond transparency is to create, with our buildings, a culture of care. And what would that look like? All living things live in a network with each other. So how can we enjoy working with the environment and really reinforce our culture of care? The idea of connecting strongly to this planet is it's an antidote for us. And I think that's what we're striving for with this book. It's very inspiring to think about our buildings, working for the inhabitants, but also working toward stronger connections with other living things. And do that with an architecture that is treading very lightly on the planet.